Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand that you may not be familiar with. Uh, it's called Max Ace. And they are another brand out of China. And they're very upfront about that. They're not trying to mislead anybody or anything like that. And they're being offered uh, by a couple of big retailers. You look at uh, BladeHQ.com, you look at KnifeCenter.com, and a few other large reputable dealers, and you're starting to see these pop up. And I had never come across any of these until maybe about two months ago. And I saw a picture somewhere on Instagram. I don't know if it was on somebody's account that I follow or it was one of those things where Instagram, you know, suggests different posts or different people to you. But regardless, I saw it on Instagram and I think I had made a comment on one of the uh, on one of the pictures and a representative of the company reached out to me and said, hey, you know, we, we, we've seen your videos. We like your videos. Would you like to do a review on one of these? I said, well, shit, why not? I got time, right? Well, turns out I didn't have as much time as uh, I would have liked to, but I am sitting down now to finally get this done. And I'm going to tell you right straight out of the gate, I really, really like the knife, especially for the price that you're getting. But if you're looking for a an EDC style knife, this is probably not going to be the knife for you. Number one, it's very large. It's got a four inch blade. It's not a tiny knife. Number two, it's a hawk bill. And a hawk bill is probably the least practical blade profile that one could ever have. Now, taking away the practicality of EDC and just, hey, I'm shopping for something cool and different and funky, this is probably going to be right up your alley. It's very, very well made. It's got a really cool profile to it. And honestly, there are some details that they have added to it that you would really expect to only see maybe in a custom knife. Now, I'm not saying this is a custom knife quality knife. However, the details like the custom shaped thumb stud, um, the custom pivot collars, and the way that the carbon fiber is inlaid, along with the way the backspacer has been milled, honestly give you the feel of, hey, that could probably be a custom knife. If you saw this, just in a picture that somebody took and they gave you no background on it whatsoever, <clears throat> then you might mistake this for a uh, much more expensive knife. Now, talking about expensive, let's talk about the price and get that out of the way. These are $300 at the retail prices that I'm seeing through dealers. I don't know if you can get a lower price. Perhaps you can. Now, at $300, for those of us that buy only custom knives, well, that's a steal. We're used to spending, you know, eight fifty, a thousand, two thousand, three, four, five thousand dollars for a knife. So, in comparison to that, three hundred dollars is really nothing. However, for the general populace that just wants a cool knife, three hundred dollars is pretty expensive, and that puts you in the league of uh, some of the higher end benchmades, maybe not some of the gold class, but definitely some of the higher end benchmades, um, the more expensive collaboration knives that Spyderco does, and uh, your higher end Kershaw's, uh, zero tolerance. So to try to compare this to those, I really can't. What is more fair, however, is to compare it to other Chinese brands that we've seen come around, like Wee Knives and Reati Knives. And I'd say that these are pretty much aiming for the same customer. I think the quality is pretty much a parallel between those brands. They're all doing a fantastic job of giving you bang for the buck. You know, things like having a lock bar stabilizer, having a steel lock bar insert, using bearings, doing custom touches, doing uh, somewhat higher quality finishes on the blades uh, than most companies do, and using high-end steels like M390. Now that right there establishes a really good value. If this were uh, CPM 154 or if it were D2 at $300, I'm not saying that those steels are bad. They're fantastic steels. I'm not a steel snob and, and most people are and don't really understand why they are, but they're fantastic steels, but they cost a lot less. So I would expect this to be around 225 to 250 with those steels. Using M390, using a micro clean steel, using one that will give you such great edge retention, corrosion resistance, and everything all wrapped up into one, it is a more expensive steel, and I think that it does justify the price of $300.
on top of the cost of the steel, you're getting 6AL4V titanium. You're getting the uh, same titanium in the uh, pivot collar done there, beautifully anodized in blue, as you see. You're getting that also in your dual thumb studs. And a fully sculpted, really, really nicely machined, well thought out titanium pocket clip. Same thing for the backspacer, that is also titanium. So, again, fairly expensive materials. This could have been made in aluminum and maybe have been a $200 knife. Instead, they went into using all titanium. The carbon fiber, it's a really cool textured carbon fiber that gives it uh, a more unique appearance. It's almost got like a pebbled look to it. I guess it's probably the best... Yeah, I'd say it's, that's about the best explanation I could give you. It really is a pebbled look. Um, nicely inlaid, nice and clean. Uh, they are somewhat raised. And it's a pleasing pattern. It's not just some random shit just thrown into the side of the knife. Uh, it does flow well with the overall shape of the knife. And speaking of shape of the knife, you've got a very, very deep thumb depression here going up into a thumb ramp that is jimped. And the thumb ramp on the back side of the M390 blade is also gent. Very well thought out. I'm really, really happy to see that they put forth the effort to do that. You've got a nice deep choil here for two fingers. Comes up and separates your final two fingers. And if your hand is small enough, your pinky will actually hook in there. My hand's a little large for that, but it still feels very, very nice. Overall, the ergonomics are fantastic. And you've got a choil in the blade, so you can choke up either even further. And then you have this little depression here for your thumb. So overall, even though a Hawkbill is not a practical EDC-style choice, uh, they have given you a practical ergonomic package that allows it to be comfortable. The packaging is rather simple. Not anything that we haven't really seen before. You've got a standard zippered case. Inside is going to be a microfiber cleaning cloth. And then you get a certification card inside. Let's see what it says. Model Red Queen M390 62 Rockwell Hardness. That's very good. Uh, so you've got the titanium and carbon fiber for the handle. And they list everything in metric, of course. Let's, let's convert that real quick. The overall length is 9 inches. The blade length is 4 inches. Cutting edge, 3.375 inches. And the blade thickness is 0.12 inches. And the weight actually translates to 5.37 ounces. This particular one was made in December of 2016. And there is the Instagram name where you can check out all of the Maxace knives. So that's the packaging there covered very, very quickly. I think overall, it's a really, really nice package. Let's give you a close-up here. You've got a belt satin finish on the M390. Notice the consistent edge, nicely sharpened. I like the extra geometry here with that top clip, that top swedge. That really just kind of disappears toward the tip. I find that to be, uh, I, I, I like things like that. Then you've got a nice horizontal satin on the flats and the ricasso. Nice clean plunge lines. There's the titanium thumb stud. Really nice pivot and really nice pivot collar. I like how that whole thing comes together. There's your golf ball dimpled carbon fiber. Nice frame shape. I like the way they've chamfered all this and tapered everything, exposing portions of the backspacer. It's only ever so slightly raised. Here's your lockup. Pretty early lockup. Again, steel lock bar insert and the over travel is built into the lock bar as well. Brand name, model name is etched onto the right hand side of the blade. There again is your pivot screw and pivot collar. 
and that beautifully done pocket clip. Nice retention on that pocket clip too. I've only carried this just for a couple hours during one day. I really haven't uh, taken this out and really carried it out for the day or anything. Uh, but it does feel nice in the pocket. They've done a good job of maximizing the, the uh, blade to handle ratio without endangering you here. Your fingertip is not going to hit the tip of the blade. Deployment's fast and there are multiple ways that you can open this uh, just by hitting different spots of that thumb disc or thumb stud I should say. It's fast and it's smooth. They did a great job on the action. It's not a super duper high-end knife but it really gives you the feel of something a lot more exotic. You know, this is like holding a Reese Wheeland or something in your hands where it's a little bit exotic in its shape, a little bit almost like a fantasy knife but done in, you know, if you look at it from here back you know, it kind of looks like it's a practical EDC knife, and then bam, this crazy, aggressive hawk bill with a little harpoon uh, comes swinging out of the handle. And that definitely makes it something a little bit different. So again, if you're looking for an EDC practical knife, eh, a hawk bill really isn't going to be for you. That doesn't mean Max Ace isn't. They have other uh, blade styles and different models available. Um, but as far as the quality of the knife, the overall presentation of it, the way they've chosen to do the finishing, they've done a great job. They have some that are a little bit more cartoonish. Um, not my particular flavor, but you might really, really dig them. So uh, check out the new versions that are up on Blade HQ right now. And, uh, and not to ignore Knife Center, I, I think they probably have some new ones as well. Um, I think that uh, this one was probably the one that attracted me the most. So I like having that matte finish titanium and the pops of blue. I think it's very attractive. Uh, overall, nice solid built knife coming right out of China and I'm gonna be doing another video very shortly on another Chinese brand where I'm gonna bring out multiples of their knives and the reason I'm doing this and I'm doing them so close together is because we're seeing a big shift in the knife industry right now we're seeing a lot of really good American brands uh, making production and mid-tech knives that are floundering just a little bit they don't really know what styles are, 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 are people are really clamoring for. They're not giving us the best premium materials, and they're still charging us about the same money. And what the Chinese are coming in and doing, you know, it's not about the, 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 the bad Chinese companies that we're used to in the past that were knocking off other people's designs and selling them dirt cheap and making a shitty product, <clears throat> Kaiser. <clears throat> It's about now making their own unique designs and providing really high quality with really, really great material choices. Here's another brand that's doing that. And what they're doing is they're going to force these American brands that we all love and we all want to support into doing the same thing, into offering more premium materials, better fit and finish. Some of these knives coming out of China have far superior fit and finish to many of the American production knives in the same price ranges. And it's crazy, but it's true. Uh, so they're forcing the American company's hands to raise the bar. And if they don't, if they don't meet the challenge, and if they don't do it soon, we're going to see a lot more people moving away from the great American brands that we love and going to these Chinese brands. Nothing wrong with buying a Chinese product. I'm the type of person that would rather support an American brand when at all possible. And I'm the same way with my cars. I only buy American cars. That doesn't mean Japanese cars aren't great and uh, German cars and all this other stuff. It's just that's my personal preference. It doesn't mean that I think you know an American car is always 100% superior to a foreign car. So we all have our own personal preferences. So there's still going to be plenty of people that go, I don't care how good the quality is and how great the value is, I'm going to buy American. <laughs> That's really tough on the throat. I don't know how you guys talk like that. I understand. I totally get it. But you can't deny that the product exists and the product is being made very, very well. So brands like this, are hopefully going to push these American brands to do better, to offer more, and to do so at a greater value. 
this is a great example of what you can get for 300 bucks and I mean M390 all titanium carbon fiber they take the time to do satin finishes and anodizing certain individual components to really give you a, a clean and cohesive design language and, and that's something that's very very important to me I want quality by the way, it is super, super crazy sharp, so the edge is great, too. Um, I want the quality, I want design, and I want it to be as affordable as it can be when I'm in the mood to buy a production knife. And that, my friends, is exactly what you're getting here. All right, I'm going to cut this off here. Somewhat short video, because I have such a long video to do for the next one. So uh, until then, I'll see you guys on the next video.